This video is made possible by Envato Elements. Stick around to learn how you can save 50% on an annual subscription. Hey, it's Jake, and today I want to talk about some weird stuff that happens in After Effects when you apply certain types of effects to certain types of layers. And we're going to talk about layer space and comp space and even parent space and what all these spaces mean and how you can manage it all using simple expressions so you never have to think about it again. Let's get started. If you've ever applied a gradient to say a text layer and then move that text layer around, you'll see that those two points that start and end the ramp don't stick with that text layer. And maybe you've used a distortion effect like CC Bend It and applied it to a shape layer. And those, again, those two distortion points don't stick with the shape. Well, this is all because of the way that After Effects is actually looking at those types of layers. So let's actually just jump straight into After Effects and I'll show you what I mean. Here I have my logo, which was designed in Illustrator, and I brought it in as footage. So currently it's not being continuously rasterized. So if I went ahead and applied a ramp to that layer and then move that layer around, the ramp is actually going to move with it. The start of the ramp is up here at the top or wherever I put it. The end of the ramp is at the bottom of the layer or again, wherever I put it. And it's going to stick with the layer and move around with it. Those two points will always be right where I left them. But as soon as I continuously rasterize it by clicking on that switch, both the start and end of the ramp points have moved. And if I move my layer around, they are no longer stuck with it. It's like they were unparented. And this is because of a thing called layer space versus screen space. And at their most basic, those are both just ways of mapping out the pixels on your screen or within a layer. So layer space is the coordinate system used in a specific layer. So if I turn off collapse transformations for a second and move the start of my ramp to the top left corner, and then we take a look at the actual controls for the effect, the start of the ramp that I moved to the top left is very close to zero, zero. So if I just set it to zero, zero, that's actually the origin of my layer space. The top left corner of any layer in After Effects is always a value of zero for the X and zero for the Y. That is the origin of the layer space. Moving this point control to the right increases the X value and moving it downwards increases the Y value. So this is just a simple X, Y graph for the pixels of the layer. For any standard layer like this that's not vector, meaning basically anything that's not a shape or a text layer, that coordinate system moves around with the layer wherever you put it. Which is why effects with point controls like a gradient ramp stick with the layer when you move them around. It's because that whole coordinate system is parented basically to that layer. But as soon as I make this vector layer continuously rasterized with this switch right here, then After Effects is no longer looking at this layer in the same way. Instead of mapping those pixels in that coordinate system to the bounding box of the layer, it expands it to be the size of the comp. After Effects is now looking at this layer that's continuously rasterized in comp space. So what is comp space? It's actually really similar to layer space, but instead of being in relationship to the layer, it's in relationship to your comp. But if I bring up the transform controls for this layer, even though it's continuously rasterized, the position value is relative to the comp. And just like the top left corner of every layer is the origin of the layer space, the top left corner of the comp is the origin of the comp space. So if I were to move my layer, which the position is based on where the anchor point of the layer is, so right in the center of the layer, if I move that towards the top left of the comp, then this value is going to get very close to zero. So again, if I make this zero comma zero on the position, then my anchor point is lined up perfectly with the top left corner of my comp. Again, moving it downwards is going to increase that Y value. Moving it to the right is going to increase the X value. So it's the exact same pixel coordinate system as layer space. It's just in relationship to the comp instead of to the layer. But that's not the case when it comes to the anchor point of a layer. The anchor point is always in relationship to the layer space. So if I move this around, it's going to shift the contents of the layer. And if I just set it to zero comma zero, then it's going to be in the top left corner, the origin of the layer space. But the position value is always in relationship to the comp space as long as it's not parented to something else. I know that it's just making it even more complicated, but we'll get to that in a little bit. I'm gonna undo so my anchor point is back in the center of my comp and then point out that this applies to any vector layer. So whether it's an Illustrator file that you're continuously rasterizing, it could be a text layer or a shape layer. All of these layers are interpreted by After Effects in the exact same way with comp space instead of layer space. So that's why when you apply an effect like CC Bend It to a shape layer, 
those point controls are going to give you a headache because they're never going to stick with the contents of your layer, unless we use a handy little expression called two comp. But first I want to tell you about this video sponsor, Envato Elements. Envato Elements delivers unlimited access to over 55 million assets like fonts, photos, video templates, WordPress themes, and even Adobe templates. And it's all provided with a very simple license that lasts even after your subscription to Envato Elements is ended. My favorite part about Envato Elements is that you have access to all of these assets with one subscription price, which is a lifesaver for any freelance gig where time is money for both you and the client. Being able to quickly find high quality assets that I can plug into any project without having to create them myself is such a time saver. Like this character illustration along with the scene elements that lets me jump straight into rigging and animating instead of having to design my own characters. Or being able to download literally thousands of high quality textures that are just ready to use. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because remember you literally get access to over 55 million assets with your subscription to Envato Elements. And if you sign up for an annual subscription to Envato Elements using the link in the description, you'll get 50% off, meaning that you'll get everything in their library for less than $20 a month, which is an insane value and an absolute no-brainer for doing your own client work. So make sure to check out the link in the description and thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. All right, now how do we use the expression to comp? Well, you start by writing out to comp with a capital C and then two parentheses. And in between those two parentheses, we're going to put an argument. So this can either be an array that holds a position value. So multiple numbers, either two dimensions or three dimensions. And what this expression is going to return is basically the distance between what we're applying the expression to and what we're targeting within this argument. And the reason this is valuable is because even though After Effects is looking at these vector layers as if they were existing in comp space, we can take the position value, basically ignoring wherever I place my layer in the composition, and calculate the distance between the actual position of the layer and the top left corner of our comp. And this will allow us to actually stick those point controls wherever we want them on our layer, even if they're vector layers and they'll always stay right where we left them. So let me show you exactly how to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and delete my logo and I'll just type out some text. We'll just say point and I'm going to apply that gradient ramp to it again. So just to show you again what's going on, my start and end of my ramp are set up here and down here. And if I move my text layer around, the effect does not move with it. Even though the transform position is moving around and it is in relationship to that comp space of the top left corner as the origin of our coordinate system, these two point controls are being placed by After Effects as if the layer is the size of the comp and it's not moving around at all. It's weird, but that's just what's happening. So let's say that I want this point to start at the top of the text and this point to start at the bottom and for it to stay with it no matter where I move the layer. Well, that's where we're gonna use to comp. So let me go into the effect by pressing E and then I'm gonna add an expression on the end of ramp property by alt or option clicking on the stopwatch. And I'm just gonna close these up so we have a little bit more room to see the expression. And what I wanna type in here is first, what we're targeting because two comp is actually in relationship to whatever you apply it to or whatever you select to apply it to. So what I want to know is what the distance between the position of this layer is and the top left corner of my comp. So I actually need to just start by typing in this layer to target the actual layer that this effect is applied to and then put a period and then type two comp with a capital C. I'll use autofill to add those parentheses and between these parentheses, is what we're basically measuring to. So what do we wanna know the relationship between? Well, it's gonna be this layer to the top left corner of the comp. So to comp, and within those parentheses, I'll start an array and type in zero comma zero comma zero. Now I'll be honest, I don't have to put this third zero in here because this is a being applied to an array that will always be two dimensions. And the only reason you would ever need three parts of this array is if it was an effect that used either two or three dimensions. So if you were applying this expression to maybe the position property, that's where you would want this third dimension because a position property can have either two or three dimensions. So that array could be different. And if you only use two zeros for the first two dimensions, then it would give you an error when you would make it a 3D layer. So I just do this out of habit, out of good practice to make sure that there's always a third dimension accounted for. It's not really gonna slow anything down. And even though it's not needed, it's just kind of a force of habit. So that's why I'm using three dimensions. So what we're saying with this expression is what is the distance between this layer and the comps coordinates of zero comma zero comma zero, which is the top left corner. Remember the origin of that comp space. 
I'll just click off to apply that and my gradient has updated. So if I click on my gradient ramp effect, the end of the ramp is now tied right here to the bottom left corner of my layer. If I click and drag this around, that point is always going to be attached to the origin of my text layer. And right now that happens to be where the anchor point is. But if I were to move my anchor point using the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool, that's Y on the keyboard, then the gradient's not moving. It's looking at where that origin point was, which is separate from the actual anchor point. Now I could tie it to the anchor point if I go back into this expression and change 0, 0, 0 to this layer dot anchor point. And now the end of the ramp is tied to my anchor point. So wherever I move it, that's where the point is going to be. I didn't actually want to do that, but I just wanted to show it as an example that you can tie it to the actual anchor point. Let me undo and get back to where my anchor point was already at my text layer's origin, and then point out that I can no longer adjust the end of the ramp. I can't click and drag it, and I can't move this around, and that's because it's just overriding it with the expression that we wrote, which again is just telling that point to be wherever the origin of my layer is, wherever this layer is in relationship to the comp's origin of 0, 0, 0. And that's not exactly what I want. I want to be able to align this point to the top of my layer. So what I need to do is just add a simple little expression at the end, which is just a plus sign and then value. And I'll finish it all off with a semicolon. Click off. Now what's going to happen is it's going to take whatever value I put into this array and add it on top of the expression that I wrote to get it to align to the origin of the layer. So if I just zero this out, then it's going to go back to the origin of my layer, the bottom left corner. But now I can offset this value because we're adding the value of whatever we applied here. So I'll just move it to the top center of my layer. And now if I move my layer around, that gradient point is staying with it. Now we still have the issue of the start of the ramp not sticking with the layer. So I'm just going to select this expression, copy it, and then go to the start of the ramp value, alt or option, click on the stopwatch to add an expression and paste it in. And now we're going to have the exact same thing happening. I can move this point wherever I want it on my layer and then move my layer around and those points are always going to stick with it. So if I wanted to do more of a diagonal, I could do it like this. If I wanted to blend this on top of the color that was already there, I'll just type in a CC composite effect, apply that after the gradient and change this to screen. And now I have more of a highlight effect going on on top of my layer and I can play around with this however I want. Maybe change the colors a little bit so it's a little bit more golden. But now I know that that gradient is going to stick with my text. That is until I say maybe change the size of the text or even scale the layer, then it's broken again. And this is because remember After Effects isn't really looking at the contents of this layer when it's applying these effects. It's basically viewing this layer as if it was the size of the comp, regardless of how big this actually is or where it exists in the comp. So these two points don't realize that the layer just got bigger and that these two points should move with it. They're only calculating the distance that they are from the origin of the layer, which scale and rotation doesn't actually change. So we need to do a little bit more work to get that to actually function the way we want. And I'm going to do it with some null layers. So I'm going to go up to layer, new, null object. If you've never used a null object before, it's a completely empty layer. It does not render. All it does is gives us values basically that we can attach things to. So I'm going to name this one point A, and then I'll duplicate it with command or control D and rename this one point B. And I'll just move them around so they're not in the exact same space. Now what I need to do is go back to my gradient expressions and update it a little bit. Instead of looking at this layer, I now want to look at the null object layers. So I'm going to just select that text and then use my expression pick whip to grab, let's say, point A, since this is the start of our ramp. So I'm just going to select the layer. I don't need to select any specific property, just that layer. And then the rest of the expression can actually stay the same. I'll click off. And now this point A control is going to be where the start of the ramp exists. Even though the effect is on the text layer, it's looking at a second layer for its information. So let's copy that expression and apply it to the end of the ramp as well. But we're going to change point A to point B since that's the name of the second null object. And now I have two independent layers controlling where the gradient ramp is on my text layer. But it's actually not working exactly right yet. And that's because we still have this plus value at the end. And we actually don't need that anymore. We want these points to be locked in 
exactly where these two null objects are. So let's just edit that expression one more time, get rid of this plus value on both instances. Make sure we don't get rid of anything we shouldn't. And now these two null objects are going to specifically place those two points of the gradient ramp. They're still not attached to this layer, but we can fix that very simply just by bringing up our parenting and grabbing both point A and point B and parenting them to the layer. Now, wherever the layer goes, the null objects go with it. So let me just reposition these null objects so the gradient looks the way I want it to. And now wherever I move this layer, that ramp is gonna move with it, even if I rotate it. Because those two null objects are parented, they're gonna move with the layer exactly the way that you expect. I can scale this down, move it around, do whatever I want, and it always lines up. The only instance where this isn't going to work is if I increase or decrease the actual font size. And you could get even more advanced with expressions to use source rect time to map the position values of these two null objects to whatever size this text is. But honestly, that's a lot more work than you probably need to do when you could just scale the layer up or down. But that's how I align any point control in any effect that uses them to a layer that just doesn't wanna cooperate. And just in case you were wondering why I didn't just use the position property as the source for where we tie the start and end to, let me actually just show you why that's not a good idea. I'll double tap the E key to bring up our expressions. And instead of using the two comp expression at all, I'm just going to type in transform dot position and that will target the position property of this layer specifically so i'll click off of that and now the start of my ramp is wherever the position is for this layer which if you remember the position property is in relationship to the comp space so it's actually doing what i want but in order to place the point exactly where i want it i need to account for that so i'm going to say plus value remember the value of the start of ramp property click off and then I can modify this to be whatever I want. So I'll put it right at the bottom center of my layer and moving my layer around, it does indeed stay right where it's supposed to. The issue is if you were to ever parent this to another layer. So if I make another new null object, layer new null object and move it down to the left, then I parent this point to the new null object, already my expression is broken. And that's because the position value of any layer is actually relative to any parent. So as soon as I parented this text layer to this null object, we're throwing comp space out the window. The coordinate system is now basically parent space. It's wherever this point is, is the origin. So if I move this to the top left corner of the null object, then bring up the position value with P on the keyboard, that is very close to zero. We now have this weird parent space, basically. So that's what two comp is accounting for. It's measuring the distance between whatever you're targeting in the first part of the expression with whatever is in the argument of the second part of the expression. Most often than not, it's whatever we apply it to, to the origin of the comp, which is zero comma zero comma zero. So regardless of whether or not something is parented, it's going to take wherever it exists in the comp at that point in time and measure the distance to the top left corner of the comp. And that's why we use two comp instead of just targeting the position value of any layer. But now you should have a pretty good understanding of the two comp expression and how all of these weird layer comp and parent spaces work. So you really don't have to think about it anymore. If you just set up the two comp expression to target what you want and what you want to measure from, then you should be able to get these point controls to stay right where you want them to be. I really hope that you learned something in this tutorial. And if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed to me if you're not already and hit that notification bell so that you know exactly when my new videos go live. And I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting more videos like this one, then please consider becoming a patron. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. You can find links for all of that stuff in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a great day. Ed, Ed,